Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to another edition of Craig's Corner. Carmine Vetrano with you, and alongside me is New York Bobcats head coach Craig Doremus. And, Craig, here we are, 2015 calendar year. We close close up on 2014, a lot to be proud of. I know a lot to work on as well. But, you know, for you and the Bobcats, the team close up 2014 uh, with two wins at the EHL December Showcase, and you guys get four wins in a row. And I know where the team was before that, it was a little bit of – one of the lower points in the season, if you would, but now for the team to, you know, have this four-game winning streak and, and to get back from the holiday break, it just seems like moods are pretty high right now. Absolutely. I think any time you can win, especially going into a break, it's important. You want the guys to feel good going into the holidays so they can spend some time with friends and families and feel good about what they're doing. And you can also see when we've gotten back here, they've had a little jump to their step. They feel confident. They feel good about what they're doing. And I'm proud of them. They, I want those guys to benefit from the fruit of their hard work. And they worked really hard going into the break, a couple of good weeks of practice following the Hartford loss, and they responded. And, and truth be told, it, it's very gratifying for myself and assistant coach Bobby Dorigo for these guys to be rewarded for their hard work. If you can, just you know, take us through those two games at the showcase, the Vermont Lumberjacks, New England Wolves. You actually uh, faced them twice here uh, at, at, at the Twin Rings before, so you know what they're all about. It was a 2-1 win against Vermont, a bit of a uh, more handily win, if you would, against the Wolves. So just again, just take us through those two games. I think the Vermont Lumberjacks are one of the more underappreciated teams in our league. Despite their record, they're a hard-working team. They've had some big wins, so some well-respected opponents. Since their change in coaching staff, they've done a better job. And the game was tough. I, the game could have went either way. I was proud of our guys. We were very good in deep zone coverage, able to get some timely goal scoring then. And then, obviously, the Wolves, uh, another good game for us. Despite, I think, being a tied or, or down one going into the half, um, we were happy with where we were as a team. We knew we were going to come away with the win. It was just a matter of us enforcing our willing, playing our style of play. Our guys did it, and they did a good job in the second half, and I think they dominated. Well, the last time we spoke, it was Vinny DeBrow taking home the Defensive Player of the Week, and then before the holiday break, Ian Harris takes home the Offensive Player of the Week. And he was he was a guy that I know we spoke at uh, or spoke about at the start of the season. You know, expecting big things coming from the Dell Ducks in the Minnesota League, and you know, at the showcase, he picks up four points, two goals in that Vermont game. And just talk about his play right now. I think his lines played really well. Him, David Clayman, and Alex Fonseca have really picked up their play as of late. I think it's a tribute to our team and, and how we're running it right now. We're getting contributions from everywhere up and down the lineup. Any given day, it could be any one or any line. And, and Ian, we're proud of him. He's worked hard. He's a hard-nosed player, plays the game the right way. When he plays physical and mean and fast, he has the ability to play at a very high level. And I'm happy he was rewarded for his hard work. Two big goals against the Lumberjacks. And then his line played the same way on Sunday. They're just they're on the attack constantly. They're moving the puck. His line made uh, David Clayman at a hat trick for us on Sunday versus the Wolves. So I think it's a tribute to those three young men and how they're playing the game right now. Well, you mentioned David Clayman and, you know, secondary scoring is huge. I know we kind of talked about that all season. You know, to take the pressure off a guy like a, you know, Corey Kennedy, maybe even a C.J. Tutillo has picked up his offensive game. But Clayman, eight points in his last five. Uh, Lucas Brown, five points in his last three. You know, again, acquiring more of that veteran guy like a Brett Johnson. It just seems like right now, you know, is it safe to say that the offensive has been clicking and the lines are starting to mesh? That's how we feel as a staff. We think we have a good balance up and down our lineup. All four lines can contribute. Probably not the most typical lineup when you look at how teams are constructed typically. Uh, most teams go with offensive lines and then two defensive lines. We feel that we get contributions from all four of our lines. Obviously, each line we feel brings different attributes to the game and how they attack the play. But all four lines we believe in and can put them out there in any situation. And it's helped us. Obviously, Corey and, and CJ have carried out load early on in the season. I think they're starting to get a lot of attention from other teams' top defensive players and pairs. And their offense has slowed down as of late. And I think for us, it's a tribute again to the depth of our team and how guys have responded to opportunities. And to be able to continue to win games like that uh, bodes well for us moving forward. During this four-game winning streak, you've rolled both goaltenders, Brandon Rathwell and Jordan Severo, both getting two wins in this uh, four-game span. And again, it just seems like right now, both of those guys are giving, giving the team a chance to win. That's huge coming up in the final two months. Absolutely. We've said it since day one. I believe we have the two best goaltenders in the league. We believe in both guys. They give us a chance to win every day. And I think in order to be successful at this level and any higher level of hockey, you have to have two goaltenders you can trust, if not more, quite frankly, based on injuries. When you look at our typical schedule, skating five days a week, playing two games a week, and I think we've played almost 37 to 40 games already this year, you have to have two guys you can rely on. And both those guys have given us a chance to win every day. And I think for them, too, it's a unique situation where they push one another. They know they're being pushed by another guy who's just as capable as them, and it keeps them on their toes and, and it makes sure that they're at their best every day. Well, let's fast forward now to this upcoming weekend. The New York Bobcats face two Philadelphia teams, one in the Revolution and one in the Little Flyers. And I know we were just talking about it before, but it's a little bit of 
a different end of the EHL spectrum, if you would, the little Flyers, the best team in the league, and or one of the best teams in the league, and then you have Philadelphia Revolution who are at the bottom, and it's it's quite the mix from you know th playing those two teams this weekend. Let's just first start with the Revolution, and you know again they're a team you don't want to take lightly. You know they have a familiar face, if you would, in, in goaltender Daniel uh, Gerasimov, so you know what what he's all about. Just the mindset right now about the Revolution. Our mindset for the past month or so has been let's not talk about the opponent, let's talk about the Bobcats and what we have to do to get the two points. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we do our homework on all of our opponents, know what they're trying to do. Um, so we're going to be educated on the revolution. Yeah, you hit it on the head. Daniil Gerasimov is one of the best goaltenders in our league, and we know we're going to have to work hard to put some pucks behind him. But uh, at the end of the day, we want our effort to be high. We want our energy to be high. It's important for us to get back on a winning streak after the break, especially with the little flyers on Sunday. You don't, certainly don't want to face them um, with a hole in your back pocket. So... We're going to work hard on Saturday. We're going to establish our tempo and our pace and really push it high from the drop of the puck. Hopefully come out of there with a two points versus the Revolution, then set up um, a big game versus the Little Flyers. For you guys to come back now, to open up, at, uh, open up the, the weekend after the break at home, how huge is that for you guys? I think it's big for us. It's good to be at home once in a while. Our boys do a lot of travel, especially in December. We have three of the four weekends prior to the break. So for us, it's a comfortable building. We feel happy to be here. Uh, we're going to practice here all week. The guys won't have to move out, so it's a lot simpler lifestyle for them. And then without fans, I think without fans, they, they've been supportive of us all year. We're hoping for a good turnout this week and some support because I think we are playing better hockey right now, and hopefully everyone in our building recognizes that. All right, thanks for your time. Best luck this weekend. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, for more information about the New York Bobcats, head to nybobcats.com. You can catch both games this weekend on fasthockey.com.